Hello friends, welcome to this channel. Today, we are going to see very important topic in Amazon S3. If you are not new to this channel, then you know that we have seen many things in AWS Amazon S3 like uh, how we can create S3 buckets and then how we can upload an object into the bucket. After that, we show S3 versioning and in the last, we show S3 object encryption, right? So, if you have not seen that video, please go and watch it. You will find the video link in the description and also in the i button. Now, in this video, we are going to see S3 security and bucket policy with demonstration. Okay? Now, first of all, let's talk about Amazon S3 security. So, it's very complex, but first you have user based security. So, our IAM user have IAM policies and they authorize which API calls should be allowed. And if our user is authorized through AIAM policy and how to access our Amazon S3 bucket, then it's going to be able to do it. Then we have resource based security. And this is the infamous S3 bucket policies. They are bucket wide rules that we can set in the S3 console and what they do is that they will say what principal can and cannot do on our S3 bucket and this enables us to do cross account access to our S3 buckets. We will do in the hands on a very deep dive on S3 bucket policies. Then we have object ACL which is final grain where we set at the object level the access rule and then finally bucket ACL even less common and this two point don't really come up in the exam okay now nodes and I am policy I am principal so it can be a user a role can access an S3 object if the I am permission allow it so that means that you have an IAM policy attached to that principle that allow access to your S3 bucket or if the resource policy so usually your S3 bucket policy allows it and you need to make sure there is no explicit deny. So if your users through IAM is allowed to access your S3 bucket but your bucket policy is explicitly denying your user to access it then you will not be access to able to access it okay okay so now this is your deep dive on s3 bucket policies they are json based policies so json is a notation language and so we have here a json bucket policy and this bucket policy here allows public read on our s3 buckets so as we can see it says effect allows principal star means so anyone the action get object on the resource example bucket slash star so on any object within my s3 bucket so this is great this is allows public access to our s3 buckets so this bucket policies can be applied to your bucket and objects. So both. The action is they allow a set of API to allow or deny. The effect is allows or deny. The principle is the account or the user that this S3 bucket policy applies to. And so some common use cases for S3 bucket policies is to grant public access to a bucket or to force object to be encrypted at the upload time or to grant access to another account using cross account S3 bucket policies. So we will do it in the hands on or deep dive on S3 bucket policies. Then we have S3 bucket setting for block a public access. 
so we have seen this in the hands on of uh, when we get started so this was a new setting that was created to block object from being public if the account had some restrictions so here we have four different kind of block public access setting we have the new access control list any access control list or new public or access point policies so this is going to block objects and buckets from being public if they are granted through any of this method or you can block public and cross account access to buckets and objects through any public bucket or access point policy so you don't need to remember these four different settings it's just a summary in here what you need to remember going into the exam is that there is way to blocking public access to your s3 bucket through this setting the exam will not test you on each of this setting okay this setting historical were created to prevent company data leaks because there were a lot of leaks of amazon s3 bucket in the news and amazon s3 come up with this way of making sure that any server could say hey none of my buckets are public because of this setting and that was very popular and so if you know that your bucket should never ever be public leave this on and there is a way to set this at account level as we will see in the hands on other securities in s3 you should know about on the networking side you can access s3 privately through vpc endpoint so if you have ec2 instance in your eps without internet access then they can access s3 privately through what's called a vpc endpoint for logging audit you can use s3 access logs and they can be stored in the other s3 buckets api calls can also be logged into the cloud trail which is a service to log api call in your accounts for user security you have mfa delete so multi factor authentication is mfa in which case if you want to, to delete a specific version object in your buckets then you can enable mfa delete and we will need to be authenticated with mfa to be able to delete the objects any fine and finally pre signed url that we have uh, we have seen briefly when we were opening that file and there was a very very long url which is a url that signed with some credential from aws and it is valid only for a limited time and the use cases for it for example is to download a premium video from a service is if the user is logged in and has purchased that video so the idea is here is that any time of the exam you see the access of certain files to certain user for a limited limited account of time think pre signed urls so now we are going to do hands on on s3 security to see all the version options so let's go to the amazon s3 console okay so let's have a play with s3 bucket policies to do so let's go into permissions and the goal for us is to define a bucket policy that we will write in json and this bucket policy is going to be prevented putting objects that are not encrypted so let's edit this bucket policy and we have two links we have the policy example which actually goes to the documentation of aws if you wanted to have a read into all the kind of possibilities you can create a bucket policies or if you just wanted to follow along with me then let's go into amazon amazon policy generator for s3 bucket okay so let's generate our bucket policy so first we need to select the policy type and the type of policy we want is an s3 bucket policy 
So please make sure that to select the S3 bucket policy. This is very important, otherwise you will not see the same option as me. Okay, so we have an S3 bucket policy here and now we want to add a statement. So what we want to do here is to deny any object being uploaded into Amazon S3. So we are going to have the effect to be deny principle of where from where from everywhere. Okay. The action is on the uploader. So the API name is it to be upload a file into AWS is called put object. So we are looking for put object here and then we need to specify the ARN. So the ARN should be the bucket name slash the key name. So let's go into the S3 management console and here they provide us the bucket ARN because they they know that we are going to use it. So let's paste it and so as I have paste my bucket ARN, please make sure to add uh, add a slash and then a star at the end of the resource name. Why? Well, the action that we have selected, which is called puts object, and the star indicates any objects within that bucket name. So we are saying deny anyone to upload an object anywhere in my bucket, and we need to add a condition here, otherwise, we will not be able to do anything with this bucket. So we will add a condition and the statement is is no so no. The key is going to be looking for the S3. So let's level let's have a look. S3 X server side encryption. So this one. Okay. Which is going to look for whether or not we have this header when we send a file to Amazon is Amazon S3 and the value is true. So let me explain what I did. We are saying if this header is none, so that's the condition. If this header is known, then deny and that makes sense. If this header is none, we are sending the file and we don't ask for any kind of encryption. So we will add this condition and this is our first statement. So let's click on add statement and we will add a second statement to to repeat it so we will deny from anywhere and then the condition is going to be again the put object so let's find it quickly put object the resource name has to be the bucket name and slash star and for the condition this time we are going to look at the second condition and we are saying string not equal the key is the same key as before so x service that encryption and then the value of is it is going to be aes 256 so we are saying if the file is uploaded but with the header but the header value is not equals to aes 256 which is representing the SSE S3 type of encryption then deny it. So we will add the condition at the statement and here we go. We have generated our policies right here. Save changes and we are good to go. So here we have defined a bucket policy which denies any object being in encrypted if it's not encrypted with SSE S3. So we can for example have a look so let's upload an object and see if that's work so we will add a file we will add coffee.jpg again and as we can see i don't specify any encryption setting in particular okay so it's going to go with none and click on upload it failed and we can look at why it failed so it failed access denied and so this is due to the bucket policy so this is obviously good because this is what we ex expected to happen and if we try to upload the same file so coffee.jpg 
but this time we are going to specify the encryption to be SSE S3. So by setting the right header, then this should work. So let's upload it and see. Yes, this has success. And finally, let's start to upload this file one last time, but by specifying a KMS type of encryption. So let's go to overwrite KMS using the SSE S3 KMS key. And again, click on upload. And this has failed again because it does not respect the bucket policy. So the bucket policy is working just fine. And so how did I figure out figure this out? So if I Google S3 bucket policy denied encryption, this shows you the kind of blogs that shows you how to write this kind of, uh, let me show you. I have buckets policy. So this is not something invented. I use the documentation to refer for my courses, but I wanted to show you how to generate this policy using the ADA policy generator. Okay. Hopefully this makes sense. Now other setting that we may want to look for it for security. So let's go into permission. And if we go into permission, we can see that there is block all public access setting. And so this is on by default and just to prevent any data leaks from AWS S3 into the world. And so we want to keep this on at all time unless we are running a public website and want to make the object public. So we will see how to do this in our future lecture. So also we can define this blog public access setting at my account level. To do so on the left hand side, I can do account setting for block public access. If I wanted to by taking this block. So this is one more level of security. Okay. And then finally for all my objects, if I look at coffee.jpg, there is something called ACL or access control list. And this is something I will not linger on because we are not using this and the exam really does not touch it. But access control list is a way for you to define objects, reads and writes at the object level. So as we can see right now, my accounts can read the objects and read writes. Thanks for the ACL. Anyway, I will not linger on it because this is not very important for the exam. But just know that ACLs are another way to protect your objects in AWS. So that's it for this lecture. I hope you all guys are now understand this. Thank you for watching. Bye and have a nice day.